In the previous lesson, we took a close look at driving dimensions. Now in this lesson, we are going to look at what's called driven dimensions. In fact, we're going to use the same part model, the wedge, so you get a good comparison between driving and driven dimensions. Now since we're talking about driven dimensions, there's really no need for us to be in the part environment. So let's go directly into the drawing environment and create a drawing for this wedge. I'll select the drop down next to new, make drawing from part. We'll go with the same sheet size as in the previous lesson. And once again, change the units to IPS. Just like the last lesson, I'll insert my front view. I'll place the front view, right hand side view, and top view. Now I'm ready to insert driven dimensions. Driven dimensions are also found in the annotation ribbon where model items is used for driving dimensions. Smart dimensions are used for driven dimensions. However, if I check the drop down below smart dimension, notice all of the different types of driven dimensions we can apply. Really nice, a lot of options here. I am going to simply select smart dimension. I'll go out to the screen and I am going to select this line right here. And notice it gives me a preview of 1.12 inches. Also notice I have a circle on the screen. We call this circle a manipulator. If I have my cursor on the right side of the circle, the dimensions place to the right of the view. If I move the cursor to the left side of the circle, the dimension is placed to the left of the view. So that manipulator is very handy. Let me go ahead and dimension this feature. And notice how it moves the larger 1.12 dimension to the outside. So we do not have crossing extension lines and dimension lines. Now let's say, for example, you don't like where it's placed in the dimension. You can simply move your cursor away from the manipulator, and then you're free to place that dimension anywhere on the screen. Now, if we dimension a circle, notice the manipulator is four quadrants instead of two. And that's because we have four possibilities for the location of that dimension. Let's go up to the top view and select the two endpoints that make up this angled surface. I'll select this point and this point. And notice once again, the manipulator is broken into four pieces. The top and bottom will give you a horizontal dimension, where the left and right will give you a vertical dimension. If you wanted the true length of this line, then you would have selected the line instead of the two endpoints. I'm going to place it right here. That's a good clean location. Let me grab this, reposition it, and then pull the dimension back down in the view. Let's go back to the front view. I am going to move this 1.12 dimension to the right a little bit. Now when you select the dimension, Notice, just like driving dimensions, you can click the arrows and the dimension will flip. And you also have the same options that you have with driving dimensions. You can add tolerances, prefix, suffix, and common dimensioning symbols. Let's go ahead and close out of the property manager and fit this to the screen. That's a good overview of driven dimensions. A lot of people like driven dimensions over driving dimensions because with driven dimensions, you have more control over how they're placed in the screen. So you need to decide when you look at the lesson for driving dimensions and driven dimensions, what method seems best for you. I know a lot of people, they strictly use driving dimensions, while other people only use driven dimensions. But I also know another school of people that choose to use both in the same drawing sheet. So there's no right or wrong, just depends on what you feel is most efficient and what works best for you.